Okay, so in this video, I am discussing with Bard and with ChatGPT about some econ concepts. I previously asked about price elasticity of demand. Uh, we had some problems with our communication where uh, Bard was convinced that during pandemic, demand for gasoline might have become more elastic, uh, which is silly. And so I, after a long exchange, convinced it that, that maybe that wasn't the case. Uh, Chat GPT, we didn't go down that path with it. I pointed out that you can't just say price elasticity of demand greater than one without also mentioning that's in absolute value, which is a technical point. But if somebody's like, imagine like a student, like, I don't know, high school, like AP student or even like principal student, like just trying to add, like this could actually lead to some conceptual problems. So if this is, you know, if they're talking between economists, fine. We, everybody knows as ChatGPT said that we understand that we're talking about it in absolute value. But if somebody's asking you what the term is, you should probably clarify at least for the, at least at first. I don't know. So uh, ChatGPT seemed a little bit more agreeable. End of the end of the interaction was uh, both good-ish. I don't know. Now let's see how they deal. That was a principles level concept. Now let's see how they deal with a more interesting concept. So. Uh, let me see. Uh, can you solve for the Corno oh, Cornet Corno oligopoly equilibrium if two firms with marginal costs of MC equals three face market demand? Price equals 39 minus Q. And let me just give the exact same phrasing to chat GPT. Certainly, to find a Corno equilibrium, we need to determine the quantity produced by each firm. Blah, blah, blah. This is annoying. Uh, we'll let that run through. Uh, it's got partial derivatives, so that's good. Uh, Okay, um, and then what's this one say? Code snippet, oh, oh boy. To find the Corno equilibrium, we've got to find the output level. Each firm maximizes its profit. Do this by setting marginal revenue equal marginal cost. This is actually not wrong, but you can't use this marginal revenue. You have to use, um, you have to, you have to take into consideration the other firm's quantity. So this is, this is not good. It's not good. Uh, if you've studied the Corno model, you know that we can find the Corno equilibrium quantities by taking uh, A minus C divided by three. A is the intercept. C is marginal cost and then divide by three for a duopoly. So. 36, right? 39 minus 3 is 36 divided by 3 is 12. And it's telling us that the quantity is 17. So that's not right. Um, this is incorrect. Try with the market demand of price equals 39 minus Q1 minus Q2, where Q1 is firm 1's quantity and Q2 is firm 2's. And ChatGPT also screwed up, so I'll give them that prompt too. Uh, ChatGPT tried to tell us that the quantity is going to be 24. Oh, that's interesting. That's actually that that is the market quantity. Did it did it do something that's actually not wrong? Let's see. Or did it is this an artifact of the question I gave it? Uh, let's see. So now nah, it's yeah, it's an artifact of what we've got here. So. This is actually this is actually looking not horrible. I don't know what we're doing here with this minus. Where's that minus one coming from? It's hard to kind of track its work. Oh, uh, maybe it was this. I don't know. Um, yeah, this it's not solving a system of reaction curves. It, yeah, it's not solving a system of reaction. Ooh, this is really bad. So it did solve a system of reaction curves, but. <laughs> But it uh, it found one reaction curve to be 
36 plus Q1, and then the other one would be 36 plus Q2. <laughs> Set these equal and subtract it off the 36. E. Okay, so that's not right. Let's see if we can get it to give us the correct Corneau solution. What does uh, ChatGPT do? Uh, sorry, what does Bard do? Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> Solving these equations simultaneously, we get Q1 is 13, Q2 is 10. Market up puts 23, price is 26. Nope, that's not correct. This is incorrect. Uh, Q1 equals 12. Q2 equals 12 in the equilibrium. Need to first generate the system of best response functions. Firm one's best response or reaction curve. This may be what it'll pick up if it's reading like other websites or whatever. Is going to be Q1 of Q2. Oops, equals 18 minus one half Q2 and firm two's reaction curve is Q2 of Q1. This is actually correct, but I'm typing is correct. Uh, minus one half Q1. Then we solve the system of equations. Okay, and I'll give the same advice to ChatGPT and we'll see if it can, we'll see if it can pick it up. I don't know. This is a big ask, I think. I gave it a huge hint. Can it do it? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's a huge win for ChatGPT. They did it. Look at this. So I did feed it a lot, right? I gave it the reaction curves, but it was actually able to talk about how it was going to get them. This is interesting. So this is price minus marginal cost times quantity. This is profits. This is right. This isn't how I teach it. The way that I teach it is I'll write total revenue minus total cost. So I would write 39 minus Q1, Q2, that whole thing times Q1. Then I'd have a separate minus 3Q1 outside of the parentheses so that we could clearly see total revenue minus total cost. Take the derivative and then have marginal revenue equals marginal cost. This is mathematically correct. So it took its derivative solved the equation, it got the reaction curve that I gave it. So it didn't just take that as a starting point. ChatGPT was able to, when it saw the answer, it was able to recreate it. So that's pretty good. Um, and then it did the same thing for firm two's profits, took a derivative, it found that reaction curve, got a system of reaction curves solved. And remember I say like, uh, I think in my Corno video, I even say this, as you're going, as you're solving the system of equations, you should get a three fourths Q1. If you get a five fourths, you, knew, you know you made a sine error. That sine error would be this minus one half times this minus one half gives us a one fourth, positive one fourth. Subtract from both sides gives us a three fourths Q1. If you want more details on it, first you could look at this, this is correct. Or you could look at my video on the Corneau, uh, Corneau oligopoly. Anyway, this is pretty good. So then 39 minus 24 is a price of 15. Yep, that's right. So this is very good. Very good, chat GPT. That's a, that's uh if you have more questions, if you have, don't worry, I will ask. Yeah, so that, that was a pretty good answer. What was uh, Bard able to do? So solve the system of equations. Ooh, so <laughs> Bard, uh, I gave them the same prompt, right? And uh, ChatGPT was able to take my solution and then build it. And it was able to solve the Corno. Uh, was able to solve from scratch. So I did give it the answer, but then it was able to it was able to produce the correct work. Bard, <laughs> Bard is not Bard is not uh, Bard is not operating at a level just yet. ChatGPT is ChatGPT can learn. That's pretty good. Chat ChatGPT is like ChatGPT is a student who uh, doesn't get it immediately tries um, and then comes in for office hours and then is good to go, right? But b before I make that bold proclamation, uh, let's try a chat GPT and let's see if it can do it again. So can you solve uh, for the Corno oligopoly, which is the best type of student, right? If you, if you don't have to get it immediately, but if you are able to puzzle through it and come into office hours or ask TA or whatever, and then you get the answer. 
Um, that's that's almost as good. Um, okay, so can you solve for the corner oligopoly uh, with market demand? And both firms have marginal costs of three. Okay, so let's see if ChatGPT uh, is going to be able to is going to be able to do that. All right. So what did Bard do? I mean, it took my starting place and it did nothing with it, right? It did absolutely nothing. So I gave it. It just gave me a code snippet for the reaction curves that I gave it. So Bard was Bard's not um, Bard's not going to pass intermediate micro. What about ChatGPT though? Was ChatGPT able to do this? Oh wow. Um, well, yeah. This is the monopoly. That's the monopoly quantity. So it's it's not right. Um, so Bard was so ChatGPT is interesting. It was able to get the correct answer, and then it. And then it messed up again. So I have to go back through and figure out exactly where the mistake is, but it's actually given, this is the monopoly quantity. So remember a second ago, I said the Corneau oligopoly quantity is gonna be A minus C divided by three. The monopoly quantity is A minus C divided by two. Here, A was 24. Uh, that's, the, that's the vertical intercept. Marginal cost was three. So 24 minus three is 21 divided by two is 10.5. That's the monopoly quantity. So it gave me the monopoly quantity. Um, sorry, you've solved incorrectly. Um, Q equals 10.5 is the monopoly quantity, but we have a duopoly. Firm one's reaction curve is, um, Firm one's reaction curve, Q2 of Q, Q1 of Q2, and then it's going to be, if I remember what it's going to be, I don't want to have to resolve. Shoot. Uh, the reaction curve is going to be A minus C, A minus C minus Q2 over 2. So A minus C is going to be 21 over 2. It's going to be 10.5 minus uh, 1 half Q2. How about that? Uh, the the Corneau equilibrium here is going to be seven, and that's right because half of seven is going to be three point five. Ten point five minus three point five is seven. So, nope, still, still doesn't get it. All right, that's sad. Um, all right, so sorry, still wrong. And firm two's reaction curve is, uh, you just have to, you have to flip all these things. So this is going to be Q2 of Q1 because we have symmetry here. They have the same, we have symmetry in this problem. Before I do that, let me just point that out. We have symmetry in this problem because the demand that I gave us was uh, 24 minus Q1 minus Q2. This is telling us that a quantity, a unit produced by firm one is viewed by the market exactly as a quantity from firm two. So total between them, they can produce 24 units and then the price is gonna be free. Uh, and any of those 24, mar 24 units that the market's willing to bear could come from either of the firm or from both of them. Uh, consider how that'd be different if like the coefficient here is like one half that would allow if firm one produced nothing, that would allow firm two to produce 48 because one half times 48 would be 24 before the good would be free. So these coefficients here talk about something like product differentiation is kind of a good interpretation. Because those are the same and they have the same marginal cost, we have symmetry, which means the reaction curves are gonna be the same. Oh, apologies for the repeated mistakes. What a, what a polite, what a polite uh, language learning model. So it's correct itself for the Cornell oligopoly equilibrium. Were they able to get it? Let's see. Hey, pretty good. So, all right, I don't know. This is, so I correct what I say before. ChatGPT is not our B or A or even B student. This isn't the student who comes to office hours and then is able to clarify the misunderstanding and then have it correct for the exam or for the quiz or whatever. This is one that, uh, 
Well, it's a AI it's a language model that can, with hints, can figure out the problem it's working on, but it can't transfer that knowledge, unfortunately. Uh, yes, this is now correct. Please repeat the same process for the following demand curve. Uh, price equals 15 minus Q1 minus Q2, where firm one and firm two are Corno duopoly firms facing marginal costs of three. Let's see. I don't know. I gave up on Bard. Bard is not, not going to do it. But maybe ChatGPT will. Let's see. Uh, the Corno equilibrium here, the demand A was 15. Marginal cost was 3. So A minus C is 12 divided by 3 is 4. So I wanted to get whole. Oh, wow, this is, uh, this is good. Look at that. It, uh, it was able to sell for it. It gave us the correct Corno quantity. Uh, and it gave us the correct Corno price. Very good. All right, I don't know. Um, can you solve for the Stackelberg? Uh, equilibrium. Um, using the original demand curve, price is equal to 39 minus Q1 minus Q2 with marginal costs of three. For the Stackelberg equilibrium, the for this class of games where we have uh, symmetry, uh, the Stackelberg leader is going to produce a quantity of A minus C divided by 2. That's the monopoly quantity. So that's going to be 36 divided by 2, which is 18. Stackelberg follower is going to produce A minus C divided by 4, which is going to be 9. Nope, that's not right. Uh, so it's going to tell me 15 and 1. So let's see if it can let's see if it can figure it out though. No, sorry, you need to replace firm two's reaction curve into firm one's profit function instead of using Q2. In other words, uh, Q2 of Q1 equals 18 minus one half Q1 needs to be substituted for Q2 in firm one's profit function before solving. Now let's see, let's see if we can figure this out. Cool, yeah, it's good, you got it. Yeah, I got it. Um, so this is right. So, uh, yep. So we, it started off with the leader. Here's Q2. Only for the leader, um, it's gonna know. So the way Stackelberg works, it's sequential. It's like an oligo. It's it's another oligopoly. But the difference between Corneau and Stackelberg is with Corneau, they're choosing simultaneously, meaning the two firms don't observe each other's choice before they make their own. With Stackelberg, firm one's gonna move first. Firm two is gonna see that. And then that's going to affect how much firm two is going to bring to the market because of the law of demand affecting the overall price. So the larger is the quantity that firm one will bring to the market, the smaller, smaller will be the quantity firm two will. The smaller is the quantity that firm one would bring to the market, the larger would be the quantity firm two would. So firm two is going to be responding, reacting. It's going to be using a function. And so that function we actually found, it's the Corneau reaction curve. And so I told ChatGPT to put this into firm one's profit function and it did, and this is correct. And so uh, we replace Q2 with Q2 of Q1 because we want firm two to be conditioning its response on firm one's choice, which it does. Now firm one's profit function is only in terms of Q1. We'll collect like terms, then we'll take the derivative. And so clean this up. Uh, this is right. Yep, that's right. This is right. It's algebraically correct. And then it took the derivative and it found the leaders. It found the leaders quantity, which matches the monopoly quantity that I said. A minus C divided by two. So 39 minus three is 36 divided by two is 18. And then 
Oh, then it went back and it did it solve. It substituted in. Yeah, it wrote out the profit function, but then it skipped ahead to the reaction. Cur no, it no, it went right to the profit function. Okay, fine. That's. I mean, because we've already determined Q one, you could do this. And so then it's it solves uh, to maximize profit two. Take the derivative with respect to Q two. Set the profit equal. Set uh, set it equal to zero. Well, hold on a second. Is that going to be the best way to do this? Um, I have to think about this for a second. If it actually wants it, if we actually want to do that. So, when you take the derivative, that will give us the first order condition will be the reaction curve. So that's what it's got, and then, yeah. So. Right, because the difference is this is already taking consideration. It's already accounting for what firm one has done. And I think that I have to think about that a little bit more to complete to 100% sign off on that. I mean, why? Because we'd never do that. So the way that we'd solve the Stackleberg problem, this is really, it's kind of going out of our way at this point. Really, all you need to do to find the Stackleberg followers quantity and all I'd ever, the only way that I'd ever do it and the other way that I'd ever teach it is like you take 18, you drop this into the Stackleberg uh, you drop this into the Stackelberg followers reaction curve. So it'll be one half times 18 is nine. 18 minus nine is nine. That's how we do it. But overall, this is pretty good and the price is right. So uh, very good chat GPT. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of cool. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm moderately impressed with chat GPT. I'm underwhelmed with Bard. Uh, I kind of gave up on Bard for Cornell, but I don't know. Play around with it. You could maybe, maybe it can... If enough people, if enough econ students play around with it, maybe we can uh, teach Bard and uh, continue to teach ChatGPT to be a good economist. I don't know. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and conclude here.